Hi guys, Bert Kammerer here with SAB Heli Division and today I'm going to be talking to you about HPS. HPS stands for High Precision System. It is basically a new rotor head design um, that is uh, available on the market today from SAB Heli Division. And uh, you guys might be asking yourselves why? Well, it's quite simple. We've received numerous requests from you guys, from a lot of our customers, um, that are just basically not in favor of a DFC head design. And we just basically listened. Um, we've designed a very traditional um, rotor head system that you guys can run on your Goblin helicopters. And uh, this is sold as an option only. Um, it is not available with the kits. So for all of you guys that have DFC, Please don't think that your helicopter is out of date. I've received questions and random emails from people say, well, my helicopter is not current anymore. This is not true. DFC is still available. In fact, it still ships with all the kits that are being sold to this date. But uh, the new HPS rotor head is just something that we've developed and we're selling as an option for all of you guys that basically want it. Once again, a more traditional rotor head design with your Goblin helicopters. Um, HPS comes in um, a nice little box. Um, you can purchase this from your favorite uh, online retailer or, or local hobby shop. And uh, there's basically two separate kits. There's a kit for the 630 and a kit for the 700. The kit for the 630 um, basically comes with everything you need to make the conversion. It does not include a swash plate simply because every single 630 kit that has been manufactured has a swash plate with four holes in it. So you do not need a swash plate with your 630 um, HPS conversion kit. However, it does come with the head block um, for the 630. It comes with the appropriate um, blade, uh, blade grip arms to make the conversion, of course, and uh, everything you need to just uh, convert from DFC to HPS. Then we have the kit for the um, 700. The kit for the 700 is a little bit more expensive, has a little bit more uh, stuff in it. Um, basically, the kit for the 700 does come with a swash plate, and that is because you need a swash plate with four holes to make the conversion. Of course, it also comes with the wider head block and the appropriate uh, blade grip arms um, to make the conversion. Very attra attractive pricing on, on these kits. And again, these are only sold as an option. Um, it's 100% optional whether you wanna try this or not. Um, once again, this was done to satisfy the demand for those of you who wanted a more traditional, uh, more good old fashioned type of uh, head design to, to fly with your goblins. So I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to put this thing together, um, what to look for, as well as uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the advantages of the H HPS head. Let's uh, start by showing you the DFC head. Um, this is obviously the head that you guys are getting with your Goblin helicopters um, as of today. I'm showing you the head on the 630. Um, the 630 and the 700 heads are different. The 630 has a narrower head block and it has a different uh, type of blade grip design. Um, so if you have a 630, make sure you buy the kit that corresponds to the 630. For example, as you can see on the 630, you have your blade grip and then you have a blade grip arm that is separate from the blade grip. So when you purchase your kit, you're going to have to remove the bearings from the blade grip. Obviously remove your blade grips from the hub, remove your bearings from the blade grip, and then reach into this hole right here with a 2.5 millimeter wrench and um, unscrew the bolt that is holding your um, blade grip arm. So that's one of the things you have to do with the 630. With the 700 is much easier because it's a one piece blade grip. So you simply unscrew the bolt that holds the uh, blade grip arm extension. Um, so basically, again, make sure you're buying the right kit. Um, with the 630, you should already have the correct swatch plate. Um, on this particular model, this is a prototype, very early version. I only have two holes in the swatch, one hole here and one hole here. But most 630s have, should have four volt, volt, uh, holes already. Um, the two holes right here, and you should have another hole here and another hole right here. 
So if your 630 doesn't have those holes for some reason, please contact us or contact the dealer you purchased the um, 630 HBS kit from and we'll make sure that to send you a swash blade. Let's take a look at the manual. As you can see, the manual has all the information you need to make this uh, upgrade or conversion, I guess you could say. Quite, quite simple. Just follow the manual and uh, you should have no problem doing it. I'm going to show you some tricks that you need to keep in mind when putting this thing together, especially the spindle and the blade grips. Okay guys, as you start building this thing and you look at the manual, everything's pretty easy to understand. Um, for example, the driver arms are very, very easy to, to uh, assemble and install on your head block. Head block is quite straightforward, it's quite simple, there's really nothing to it. One detail that you have to keep in mind is when you build these things right here, the uh, pitch links. Um, one threads to the right clockwise, the other one threads to the left counterclockwise. The advantage of that is that if you want to make very fine tracking adjustments, you can just stick a very small wrench, like a 1.5 millimeter wrench, through this hole and you can turn it um, to get that perfect tracking on your machine. So it's a cool feature right there. So anyway, as you start building this, you're going to find in the uh, box an O-ring, actually several O-rings, and you're going to find the actual dampers, which are nothing more than just uh, a piece of plastic, to be honest with you. It's very strong. Um, it doesn't give at all. Um, what's basically giving you the dampening is the, uh, the O-ring itself and not the, uh, the damper itself. The damper serves more the purpose of a limiting, limiting device. It's a technopolymer material. So anyway, take your uh, O-ring and use some grease. Um, I recommend synthetic grease. Make sure it's not a petroleum-based product because it'll eat it up over time. So any sort of synthetic grease and grease it up real well and then stick it inside the, uh, the head block. And once you've done that, you basically stick your uh, the actual damper and as you can see it's really hard to to push all the way in it's not probably going to want to go it's going to kind of want to fall off so prevent to prevent that from happening just kind of let it hang there and just stick your uh, your blade your uh, blade grip with the spindle obviously on both sides and you might need to stick the other um, blade grip and start tightening to compress these uh, uh, technopolymer uh, dampers into the O-rings and that's perfectly acceptable don't worry about it that's perfectly fine that's how it should be but let's talk a little bit about dampening the kit will come with uh, uh, several different shims you have to put the brass one which is a one millimeter shim if you have a set of calipers you can confirm it's a one millimeter shim and then you put a 0.2 millimeter shim. Um, you're supposed to have, um, this is how the kit is recommended to be built. This setup right here will give you a standard, will give you a pretty good dampening to begin with. It's not too aggressive and it's not too soft. Um, the dampening can be adjusted accordingly, um, basically to change the response of the model. Uh, dampening doesn't really affect the possibility of a boom strike or anything like that as opposed to the DFC head. You're not going to run the risk of an explosion. Of course, if you have uh, the dampening way, way, way too soft and you're flying very high head speed, very hard 3D, well, of course, you might tap the boom. So adjust the dampening, use your common sense. Um, I recommend you start with the, point, with the one millimeter shim and a 0.2 millimeter shim and try it like that and see how you like it. If you think that you want more response, the helicopter is not as crisp as you want it to be, then add a second 0.2 millimeter shim. So you'll end up with uh, one 1 millimeter shim and two 0.2 millimeter shims, obviously on each side, and then go fly again. Um, get a feel for the response of the machine. Again, the response will change based on the dampening. The softer the dampening, the softer the response, the harder the dampening, the more aggressive the response. So go ahead and give that a shot and try it. After you get a few flights, just check your dampening and readjust. You might want to add another shim if you really want stiff dampening or you might be perfectly happy with the setting. And here it is assembled once again. 
Um, I used the, point one, the one millimeter shim and the 0.2 millimeter shim on each side. So I have the recommended setup. Um, it's a little bit soft, not much, but uh, I enjoy it like that. Like I said, if it's not extremely soft, you're not going to have any issues with potential boom strikes. This head is about 10 millimeters taller than the DFC head for that same purpose. If you like to fly low head speed, um, you want to have a little bit of dampening in, in, in the head of course. With this setup I can fly about 1700, 1650 with no wobble whatsoever and it feels really really good. When I want to fly hard 3D I go up to about 2200 no problem. Once again, if you want more response from the machine, go ahead and add another 0.2 millimeter shim on each side. Um, if you want um, less response, even lower head speed, then remove the 0.2 and only leave the one millimeter shim on each side. But you have to have at least a one millimeter shim um, on each side. Uh, otherwise, you'll have just too much way excessive dampening and you'll have too much slop on the spindle, in and out slop. You don't definitely don't want that. Um, so that's one of the advantage of, advantages of the HPS head is the fact that you can fly very, very low head speeds and as the dampening gets soft and the blade grip actually teeters like this, you're not putting any stress on any parts because this basically this ball link is teetering along with the, the blade grip and everything sort of relaxed. Nothing, there's no parts here that are getting stressed with the soft dampening. So another good advantage of the DFC, uh, HBS head is the fact that you have these two arms, swash uh, driver arms that are dedicated to doing nothing more than holding your swash in place. So your phasing is always accurate. Um, your phasing is not determined or is not driven by these uh, pitch links that actually can twist a little bit on the, DF on the DFC head. So, and there you have it. That's the HPS head from SAB heli division. I hope these tips were useful and uh, basically when it comes to maintenance just make sure that you keep your rotor head maintained at all times. Um, with the HPS system maintenance is not as critical as it is with the FC. I don't know if you guys ever watched the video I did with some maintenance tips um, for the DFC head but basically with any DFC head you need to make sure your dampening is always tight um, with the goblin you need to make sure that your bowlings are tight and all the way up and uh, you just kind of keep an eye on it and use common sense with the HPS system even though I still encourage you guys to keep your helicopters well maintained maintenance is just not as critical dampening is not as critical and the parts just don't see all the stresses um, that they see when you run the DFC head so just cool little rotor head system. I'm flying still DFC on some machines. I'm flying HPS on others and I really enjoy them both. If I want to fly low head speed, I definitely, definitely fly the HPS system. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.